All right, everyone, we start off today talking about grifters. No, not the grift left this time, mostly the neolibs and the neocons trying to sell you bullshit on climate change. Now, uh, I'm going to be purely scientific here um, instead of going off into la-la land because I am an environmentalist in the real sense, like as in take care of nature, keep things clean, plant more trees, try to become more efficient, ban the plastic bags and shit like that, things that actually work. But they require a little bit of personal effort. Most people, they're nimbious, they're grifters, they want to throw money at the problem and have someone else handle it. That will never solve any problems. This is why craptivism fails. First and foremost, though, before we get into the sum and substance of the video, and by the way, ignore YouTube's message at the bottom if you're watching it on YouTube. It's trying to link you to Wikipedia. Wikipedia was so sold out long ago, and one of its own co-founders now basically has disowned it. There will be a pinned comment if you're on YouTube with links uh, to four different video hosting sites, actually, that I use down below. Uh, and you can go there, and remember, I make two videos a day on YouTube, but I make four total videos a day on the other sites. Uh, so you're not getting the full clank if you're just a YouTuber at this point. It's because their algorithms suck. Right now, led in part by the Biden White House, the Asterisk Administration, you have an attempt to rebrand climate change as climate crisis. And the reason is because over time, people have become desensitized because they keep getting told the world is ending and the world keeps not ending. So you have to call it a crisis. It's just a linguistic propaganda. It's a simple rebranding. I will tell you this, though. And again, I tell you this as someone who is generally pro-environmentalism. And there are some exceptions. Like, I'm pro-green energy, but it is not the magic bullet. Um, I am not particularly worried about CO2 emissions, but I'm quite worried about the emission of heavy metals, radioactive waste spewing out of Fukushima and Chernobyl to this day. And those are still there. Nobody wants to remember them. I'm worried about all sorts of the soil erosion, the lack of uh, easily extracted uh, potassium, or, or phosphate rather, for root crops. That's going to become a problem in the next 50 years. Desertification is a problem. Deforestation is a huge one in certain parts of the world, although many areas of the northern hemisphere are reforesting. That's great, but eh, the Amazon's still falling by the wayside, so there are definitely a, a million environmental issues we need to tackle. Extinction and so forth, threatened species, protecting them. The ones that deserve to be protected, the ones that are really cool and unique, like rhinoceri, I think we should prioritize those over a tree frog. I'm just saying that you, you got to have some priorities in mind. If you believe, though, that climate change is a, is a threat to mankind, and you believe that that's primarily man's fault, primarily like 90%, 100% the result of man's industry, we're doomed. I hate to tell you this, but you might as well do absolutely nothing at all, because in order to actually reverse that, you'd have to go back to a pre-industrial lifestyle. We would essentially have to abolish modernity, world trade, world travel, all fossil fuel usage. We'd have to reduce the world's population by roughly 95%. Otherwise, we wouldn't have enough land to feed ourselves because we wouldn't be using chemical fertilizer. We wouldn't be shipping foods and goods around to, to increase efficiency using oil mainly to do so. Um, any electricity you had would be very simple wind systems. You'd be going back to windmills. That'd be a windmill attached to a, to a dynamo would basically be the only energy source. And eventually you'd run out of the uh, minerals that you would need to actually purify to make the dynamos because you wouldn't be allowed to use industry. You'd be mining with like pickaxes like dwarves or something. Why? Because CO2 emissions, which are labeled the main greenhouse gas and supposedly they drive man-made climate change, which is going to destroy us all at some indefinite point in the future. And by the way, they've already predicted that three different times and their prediction has always been wrong. And then they make a new one. This will continue to happen forever. Uh, if you believe that, basically the emissions level started rising in the middle of the 19th century, commensurate with the first real use of coal and things like that, and steam engines and so forth. The world population back then was minuscule compared to what it is today. The deforestation of much of the world hadn't yet happened. There were still plenty of old growth forests in the New World. The, the Congolese basin was virtually unextracted because it wasn't until after the Industrial Revolution that Europeans had the technology to deal with the malaria and shit there uh, and, the, and the climactic conditions. It was sparsely populated. You would essentially be arguing we need to kill off or sterilize 95% of the world, ban all forms of fossil fuel usage. And by the way, you wouldn't have nuclear. Where do you think the uranium comes from? Well, it comes from mining. What kind of energy source that is actually portable is used to power 50 100 ton machines? Enormous cranes and bulldozers and steam shovels and shit like that. 
What's used to transport the uranium? Well, oil. Oil and gas. That's what you, you, you don't use nuclear power to extract the uranium. You don't use, solar panels can't move a 100 ton vehicle. You could move it with electricity. You know how big the batteries alone would be? It'd be the most inefficient thing ever. And how are you going to make the batteries? Because you need to mine even fucking more to get the rare earth minerals to make them. You see, we need greater efficiency by an order of magnitude in order to make it actually work. I think we can raise the efficiency of green energy usage. I, I strongly support home solar, despite the drawbacks of mining. I think that once the efficiency is higher, you could make solar panels using solar-generated energy, and it'd be a sort of a self-replicating thing. But you'd still need fossil fuel. You just wouldn't need nearly as much of it. But the problem is, nearly as much of it would still be more than we were using in the 1870s when the Industrial Revolution became a, a thing. By 1860s, technically speaking. I don't know if the cotton gin really is quite the same as mass extraction of resources and <laughs> transcontinental railroad. Much of the world was still fallow back then. And you've got to understand food production is a big thing too. The, the other counterpart really is just feeding people. The world's population requires the current amount of agricultural land to be promulgated, not just promulgated, but also with chemical fertilizer. How are the chemical fertilizers made? Well, they're not being made in nuclear plants. Basically, you're stuck. <laughs> you're going to have to be pre-industrial. You would have to go back to basically the main energy sources, solar possibly, and then charcoal for heating and stuff. You know, you could have basic steam engines and run them on charcoal, maybe. That's kind of, it's not carbon neutral or anything like that. Now, in order to have the current world's population reverse emissions, which I think would actually be a bad idea, and the extra CO2 is actually going to create more vegetation. It's marginal, but when you've got a whole world to work with, it is meaningful. Bumping more carbon to the system, more energy, the plants thrive more. Uh, they will tend to reabsorb it. This could, by the way, cause another ice age. Just so we're aware that long, thousands of years from now, that could be a problem. You'd have to start re-injecting liquefied CO2 into mine shafts and stuff. You'd have to shut down all industry. You'd have to kill most people. You wouldn't even be able to wait to just sterilize them and let them die off on their own. That would cause a demographic crisis that would cause civil war anyway. There is no solution, you see. And that's what they don't want to tell you. If they actually believed that it was a worldwide uh, generational threat, they'd be sterilizing people. Well, birth rates still seem to be quite high in much of the world. Well, I wonder why that's a, a thing. It's because these people want more of your money. They're, look at the solutions that the climate lobbyists, the, 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 the paranoid people there, sell to you. We need a carbon tax. An out-of-sight, out-of-mind program where China will totally tell us the truth about its emissions totals. It won't skeeve, it won't move a zero here and a decimal point there and change a couple of numbers to make it look like it's conforming like the rest of the world. It would never do that in order to host more heavy industry. It would never cook the books. It would certainly never command companies to cook the books. It would certainly never tell them, hey, you know, your smokestack is putting out 500 too many units, but no, it's actually not. That's not going in the book. It's a big fat zero. They would, they would never do to climate uh, emissions numbers what they do to currency or, or to debt or to anything else or to productivity, GDP totals, and stock totals. China would never do that to the world. India would never do that. Of course they would because they want to get ahead. See, they still got their skin in the game here. People in the West have become decadent and they're no longer, they don't want to compete and, and succeed and be top dog anymore. They've gotten like bored and weird. And so they bitch about climate change, but none of the things that are actually proposed as solutions to this largely imaginary problem, which if it is a problem, we're probably doomed anyway because <laughs> it wouldn't be entirely man-made, uh, they won't work. It's like when Thunberg or Gore or something like that, when they say, well, for Earth Day, please shut off your computer for an hour. That's not going to do anything. And these people, by the way, not a single one of them leads by example. You may have noticed this. Al Gore should sell his planes. And he should use that money to hire 100,000 people to plant a whole goddamn food forest, Varg style. He should hire Varg Vikernis as his environmental uh, czar and then buy like a thousand acres of land and turn it into a forest. That would help. That would absorb a huge amount of CO2. But he's not going to do that because he's living lavish and he's telling you to use less. He wants more of your pie. That's what Al Gore is telling you. It's grifting. It's pure nonsense. There is no climate crisis. Just come out and say, and by the way, stop being, stop being afraid of people judging and saying, well, you hate science. No, I understand science. 
I've studied ecology at UVM. I've studied science. I'm well aware of the facts of CO2 emissions rising over time and due in part, I will say, to human industry. But there's nothing you can do about it and the proposals they're making won't work. Go be a primitive tribesman. Go back to the Stone Age if you think that this is a problem. You're not going to be able to have a postmodern Star Trek style utopia. It's simply not possible with the way energy is produced. The closest approximation would be to set up extremely long-term, extremely stable systems to extract energy into a city-state structure. Geothermal or enormous solar arrays that are partially automated and maintain themselves pretty well. If you can get a self-maintaining, highly efficient solar system going uh, with robots, basically, yeah, okay, you could probably have a couple thousand years of perfectly efficient energy production. But eventually that too would break down, an asteroid would hit it, an earthquake would shatter it and stop working. Long-term geothermal, drill down in, extracting a bunch of energy in the process. You could use it cooking food, powering dynamos, you have lights and stuff. But it's not forever. Ultimately, you'd have to regress to a hunter-gatherer style world. You'd have to return to monkey. The primitivists are the only environmentalists that actually get it right if climate change indeed is an existential issue. Now, if you think that it's a very long-term, just potential detriment, then you can't, there's nothing, there's no re need, need, uh, need to do anything. Why bother? A thousand generations will go by and things will be like a, a degree warmer. Well, I hate to tell you this. If you look at ice cores or literally any other evidence, the climate is shifting and there's nothing you can do about it. Hell, we could accidentally shift it in the other direction too far and cause an ice age. That's not hyperbole. We're probably slowly sliding into another ice age now, but we're on the upswing in the meantime. This is probably a good time to be alive, climactically speaking. We're in the basically the post-middle 18th century warm period. It could end at any time, just like the medieval warm period did, and all of a sudden, half of the northern hemisphere becomes uninhabitable. Now, that would really uh, piss on your parade now, wouldn't it? So, yeah, stop worrying about a climate crisis. There is none. That's about all. Peace out.